Okay, we are at the entrance to the Fermi lab. You can see the sign over there. I don't know if it's showing up very good on the video. I'm going to pull ahead and park. This is going to be a multi-part science series. For those of you that don't know, and you can look up more details just by Googling it, or I can believe, I believe it's called uh, Fermilab.org. But the reason why I stopped here at the entrance, and this is, by the way, the still the world's largest operating accelerator, as far as cyclotron accelerators, the ones that go around in circles. There are straight line accelerators. I don't know if this is causing problems because there is a tremendous amount of wind going on, but I wanted to show you guys this sculpture here. And this is called Broken Symmetry. And I'll try to get in an area to where there's less wind because it is just horrible. I was going to start filming before I got here, but the wind, as usual in Chicago, and here I'll turn the other way to kind of block the wind. You can see it's pretty much knocked all of the leaves off of the trees. We had pretty much all the leaves on the trees up till about two days ago and then the wind came and pretty much knocked them all off so not a lot of fall colors left let me get to the center part here because I actually want to show you the sculpture and give you some details about it like I said it's called broken symmetry and it is made out of armor plate taken from the US naval ship and carrier USS Princeton. Let me not stumble over these rocks. And the reason this is called Broken Symmetry is there's only one view. And I'll take the camera out and show you. That's the view looking straight up. Okay, as we can see, you're looking straight underneath it. That's the only view of the sculpture that is actually symmetrical. All of the rest of the views are asymmetrical. And uh, the reason why they used steel plating from a battleship or a carrier to do this is the uh, sculptor is, was the first director of Fermilab. His name was Robert Wilson. And uh, he did it in reference to the Bible scripture about beating swords into plowshares. I'm going to walk over here to the walking bike path and give you another view of the sculpture. So by taking the armor plating from the carrier and make it into a sculpture kind of represents that beating the swords into plowshares there you can see it's kind of non-symmetrical and also on the edge there you can see it's got kind of some red coloring on it there too it's a combination of two colors red and black and those holes I guess they said according to the article that I read they're just to cut down on the wind vibration they also bought a lot more armor plating from the the ship, the Princeton, for uh, use in, inside the actual functioning accelerator itself to use for shielding. But this is one of just many, many sculptures around Fermilab. Besides being into running the accelerator and science, Fermilab is a fantastic place for people that love art. And if I get a chance, I'll try to show you a few more of the sculptures. So anyway, that's the main entrance. Where I'm going after this is to meet up with my brother-in-law, Jim, who's a physicist here. Now his experiment, although part of it has to do with the cyclotron, his experiment has to do with shooting neutron beams, or not neutron, neutrinos, neutrino beams from here up to a detector that's buried underground, I believe in Minnesota we'll get some more detail of that and just to give you a little background about who the lab is named after Enrico Fermi was a physicist from Italy and he was one of the physicists that helped develop the very first nuclear reactor in the last part of his life he did live in Chicago passed away in the mid 50s and the kind of neat thing about him is there's two basic types of physicists. There's the experimental physicists that actually run equipment and test things. And then there's the theoretical 
physicists that basically just uh, they can work with paper and pencil or a blackboard or whatever and like they say in science you can afford a lot of theoretical physicists because all you need to give them is an office and a pencil and paper and a blackboard but experimental physicists cost you a lot more money because you gotta buy these big cyclotrons I guess there's a tour going on over there they also have tours of this outer area there's uh, all kinds of wildlife and stuff so there's different tours for different parts of it so if you're into wildlife conservation and nature they've got a tour for that if you're into art there's plenty of artworks to look at and if you're into the geeky science toys we'll be going over to that high-rise building over there that's the Minos experiment I believe that's the one my brother-in-law's working on I think well I should I shouldn't you know I'm not going to talk about it. I'll let him talk about it and explain it because he's the one running it so Hi, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Here to have uh, lunch with my brother-in-law, Jim, in the high-rise. Oh, my license? Okay, hold on. Is that your phone in there, man? No, it's a video camera. I videotape stuff for uh, on YouTube. Oh, okay. Suburbanrider.com. Really? Yeah, it's kind of neat because you watch it and it's like you're riding along with us. So, okay. It's kind of cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a cool thing to do. Okay, let's see. Go down here and then... Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, pretty much another thing is uh, with all the advanced research and science they do, everything is pretty much open to the public. There's no real secrets here. The only stuff that's restricted is just for either safety or practical reasons. I mean... They try, they actually make an effort to try to show you and explain to you as much as possible. They just won't let you in areas that obviously endanger anybody or get you exposed to high levels of radiation. So, uh, with my brother-in-law working here, I will get to see a few extra areas, like some of the areas he works in and stuff like that. But basically the tour that the public takes, which last summer I was here, I took one of the public tours too. You get to see a heck of a lot of things. Here's another one of the sculptures too, the obelisk deal there. Now they make a whole uh, they make a whole section on the web explaining all these. As a matter of fact, the easiest way to get to it really is just go to Google and type Fermi Lab Space Sculptures, and you can see all kinds of articles about it and stuff. Wow, they're rather busy today. I wonder what's going on. I wonder if there's some kind of conference or something. Hope I'm able to find a place to park. I would think through the middle of the week like this there wouldn't be uh, that much going on, but I guess there is. Well, I'm pretty early anyway, so it doesn't really matter if I have to park way down at the end and walk. Just want to make sure there is actually a place to park. Okay, we got one here. We're looking good. It's not a bad place. So I will shut the camera off for a minute and we'll go inside and I'll show you some more stuff.